I want royalties. Are you going to pick that? Steve, it's Bishop Osho Farry, and what I'm going to try and do today is explain this poem, which is a film station by Elizabeth Bishop. And so it starts off by going, oh, but it is dirty, this little filling station. Filling station, of course, might be an Americanism in uh, Hiberno, English, or here in Ireland, we'd call it a petrol station. Uh, oil soaked, oil permeated. See, the word oil is repeated twice there to emphasise, I suppose, how oily and how dirty this place uh, is. Uh, it's soaked and it's permeated. Permeated means it goes all the way through. So it's not just dirty on the surface. This place is filthy the whole way through. Uh, and it's oil permeated to a disturbing overall black translucency. The whole place is manky. Be careful with that match. Oh, it's a humorous tone there at the end. Second verse continues and uh, describes some of the people that can be found in this place. Father wears a dirty, oil-soaked monkey suit. That's the third time you guys have noticed this already. That's the third time the word oil has been used. So she's really, really emphasizing the filth, the dirt of this place. Um, father wears a dirty oil soaked monkey suit. You know, that's kind of one of those overall things that people wear sometimes when they're working, maybe farming or doing a job that is uh, a dirty job, maybe. Uh, it cuts him under the arms, and several quick and saucy and greasy sons assist him. It's a family film station. So, she's painting a picture here of the family that work on this farm. You'll notice, of course, that they're all men. Father and the sons. No sign of a, of a female touch at all. Uh, and they're all quite thoroughly dirty. First two verses, what do we have? Loads of trademark Elizabeth Bishop amazing description. Uh, let's keep going. Third verse. Uh, Elizabeth Bishop asks herself a question. I imagine her sitting there in the petrol station, maybe filling up the car, and she has a question for herself. Do they live in the station? She's watching the people work. Uh, she says, it has a cement porch behind the pumps, and on it, a set of crushed and grease impregnated wicker work on the wicker sofa. A dirty dog, quite comfy. So again, loads more description. She's describing maybe some of the more homely aspects to this petrol station. It does have a porch, albeit cement, it does have some kind of a sofa, albeit a crushed and grease impregnated one. So still this motif of this petrol station being absolutely filthy comes up again and again. Um, you will notice that the wicker work, I presume you guys know what wicker work is? You know, that kind of um, uh, furniture you'd often see in a conservatory maybe, or sometimes outside, often made of like a dried willow or something like that, kind of woven together. That's wicker work. Um, and this wicker work is grease impregnated. So it's so foul, it's been impregnated with grease and oil, I suppose. It is a petrol station. And it's interesting that it's impregnated, so it's the men again who have done the, who have made it so dirty. They have impregnated the wicker work. Uh, next verse. Some comic books provide the only note of colour, of certain colour. Uh, they lie upon a big, dim doily draping a tabaret. Uh, a doily? Doily is one of those kind of nice little, uh, sometimes knitted, sometimes crocheted, a uh, little piece of material that uh, maybe your granny or a, a, a relative might uh, put it, uh, put a pot plant or something on it, maybe in the uh, on the mantelpiece in the kitchen, in the mantelpiece in the sitting room, maybe with a little ornament or something on top. But it's a, a really delicate thing, um, and these are draping a tabaret part of the set. A tabaret is a, a a fancy bit of furniture, basically. Uh, beside a big hirsute, hairy, uh, begonia. Begonia is a flower. So she's noticing some strange details here. These details don't fit. You don't find doilies in petrol stations. You don't find plants, flowers, or tabarets. They're out of place. So Elizabeth Bishop thinks about this. Why the extraneous plant? Why the extra plant? Why the tabaret? Why, oh, why the doily? Why do these... Greasy, dirty. Remember how many times the word dirty was repeated? Four or five times? Why are these fancy things there? The doily, in fact, is embroidered in daisy stitch with marguerites. It's heavy with grey crochet. She goes on. She thinks some more. She realises somebody embroidered the doily. Somebody waters the plants. Or, here comes a joke, or oils it, maybe. Anyway, somebody embroidered the doily, somebody waters the plant. Somebody arranged it, arranges the rows of cans so that they softly say, a so, so, so. Um, Elizabeth Bishop here is noticing 
This isn't the touch uh, of the dirty guys who work there. This is someone else. She notices that there's someone actually arranging cans of oil. Imagine that's one can of oil. Uh, someone is arranging them in such a way. Oh God, I can't draw it. <laughs> that they suddenly start saying so, so, so to highly strung automobiles. It's almost as if the cans of oil are trying to relax some of the broken cars maybe that might come in. And she comes to her final conclusion. Uh, somebody loves us all. Even these dirty, horrible people who live there in the petrol station, somebody even loves those guys. Um, so if there's hope for those guys, maybe there's hope for Elizabeth Bishop. Maybe there's hope for us. Uh, this poem describes, um, I suppose, and anyone who has studied a little bit of Elizabeth Bishop will know that her, her poetry is always full of this idea of epiphany. You know, a moment of sudden realisation where you realise something, something becomes clear. At this moment, when Elizabeth Bishop sees what's going on in this petrol station, when she realises that somebody is there to try and make this place a better place, she realises that someone must love us all, that there's someone out there for everyone. Uh, some people think this is a religious poem. Maybe God is the person who's there. Others think maybe it's the love of a, a mother, a father, a brother, a sister, boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, husband. Could be anybody. But it's definitely a poem that I think we can uh, all relate to, hopefully. All right, thanks very much for watching. <laughs> Oy, how are you